Alicia Rochelle, the National Ambassador for St. Germain, and welcome to Salon St. Germain. If you were not here with us last night, Salon St. Germain is all about getting creative collaborators to come together to help inspire you to bring joy to your home with elevating home entertainment. So last night, we were inspired by different art movements creating moments of joy at home. So really looking at how you can create these cocktail moments with home design, interior design, and plant styling all around a really incredible cocktail moment. So Salon Saint Germain is actually an evolution from Maison Saint Germain, which some of you may remember. Maison Saint Germain was all about celebrating the harvest of a thousand elderflowers, which is in every bottle of Saint Germain. But we wanted to do something a little bit different this year. Obviously, holidays look a little bit different. We are celebrating and spending more time at home. So we really wanted to take that premise of collaborating with creative visionaries and bringing it more in terms of how we can help you create these sparks of joy right in your own home. And so Maison Saint Germain is uh, really about celebrating that. So Salon Saint Germain is what we are actually debuting this week. Uh, yesterday was our first series and today is our second series. I have partnered with renowned interior designer Sasha Bykoff and everyone's favorite plant stylist, Hilton Carter, and we have collaborated on creating these moments, these cocktail moments in your home that you can really help to create that beautiful holiday cheer, whether it's with your loved ones from far or near. So we were inspired by three art movements. All of these art movements are movements that were um, really flourished in Maison um, uh, Saint-Germain-du-Pré. And Saint-Germain-du-Pré is a uh, really wonderful neighborhood in Paris. It actually has inspired the brand. And this neighborhood um, really was a hotbed for artists. It's where you have the Dollies and the Picassos and the Josephine Bakers um, creating, musing off of each other and really creating the heartbeat of Paris. So we were really inspired by that. So we've taken surrealism, art deco and cubism and created different moments in the home where you can create cocktail moments um, with interior design, plant design, plant styling, and also really fantastical cocktails. So tonight we're going to be showing you how to wind down with a nightcap 
with the surrealism moment. And I'm really, really excited to introduce you to Sasha Bykoff and Hilton Carter. Hey guys, so good to be back. If you weren't here yesterday, uh, we had a really great time. And if you were here yesterday, well, welcome back. Um, I'm just so excited to actually have the opportunity to talk about this theme because we're talking about the nightcap, which I love. You know, a lot of your friends probably already left the party, but you get to hang out and have that last drink of the night. So I'm super excited and I love that this theme is surrealism, one of my favorite art movement. So um, I'm looking forward to showing you what um, I want to bring to the table when it comes to surrealism uh, during the night caffeine. Sasha, what is your ideas as far as uh, how yesterday went? Hi, everyone. I'm interior designer Sasha Bykoff. I'm in New York City right now, but I I'm going to be teleporting all of you tonight to 1920s Paris and Saint-Germain. We have a beautiful nightcap set up for all of you guys, inspired by surrealism. We started with Art Deco. We then went to Cubism. And now we are going to be entering a total fantasy, a total dream-like setting, something that you can never have imagined in your wildest dreams, filled with fun motifs inspired by Salvador Dali and Rene Magritte. And I am so excited to see what Alicia has in store for us for her Surrealist Nightcap. Let's go check it out. So you've had dinner and now it's time to wind down with a nightcap. As someone who creates cocktails every day, one of my philosophies is that absurdity breeds innovation. And two things that don't belong can often lead to a surprising delight. Saint Germain du Pré certainly bred a variety of artistic waves. Surrealist artists found themselves working on their manifestos late through the night, often with a cocktail. This comes alive with the Saint Germain cocktail smoke and petal. With its clouds of cotton candy served in a teacup for whimsical delight. Let me walk you through how to make it. Take two ounces of your smoked tea infused rum, three quarter ounces of Saint Germain elderflower liqueur, one drop of orange blossom water, stir over ice until chill, double strain over a large cube. Then add your cotton candy cloud. So this was all about taking your cocktails to an otherworldly space. This is all about cocktail theater. Think about aviary or those really fun cocktail bars. And I'm showing you how you can actually present this right from your own home. So surrealism to me is really inspired by Dolly. Um, I love playing with like the clouds. And so that's what was really the inspiration for this cocktail. But I also wanted something that was very unexpected in terms of palette. So what I've done here is a rift on an old fashioned super, super super easy, super simple. I have a, a infused smoked tea rum. So basically I'm just taking a little bit of loose tea, uh, smoked tea, about two tablespoons to a bottle of rum. Uh, dark rum is what I use, Santa Teresa, and infuse that for about two hours. You could do it overnight if you want, but at least two hours will give you some of the flavor. And it's just that simple, strain it, and then you're ready to go. So I'm gonna do two ounces of that. I'm using a crystal mixing glass. My ice is already in here. Then I'm going to do 0.75 ounces of St. Germain. So St. Germain is gonna give it that beautiful floral note. Also gonna add um, a touch of the sweetness to the cocktail. But it's also going to play with the earthiness of the rum. And then just to really add that beautiful nose, I'm doing one drop of orange blossom water. Orange, blo orange blossom water is such a great uh, aromatic, beautiful note it adds, but it doesn't add any additional sweetness, so you won't have an overly sweet cocktail. So I'm gonna do a quick stir. Now I like to serve this cocktail over a large cube. I am doing this cocktail in a teacup that's really um, playing with that whimsical dolly life. We pour that cocktail right over that. And as you see here, I already have my cotton cloud uh, candy already set up here. 
So it's just the perfect table side to really wow your guests. And voila, you have the smoke and petal cocktail. Alicia, you wild me. I love, love, absolutely love the old fashioned. Never had an old fashioned in a teacup, but you know, it's always uh, time to uh, try new things, right? <laughs> given that it's we're all, all about trying new things. <laughs> of course, of course. Given that we're all at home celebrating differently than we were used to, uh, probably more intimate this holiday season. Once we're all able to get back together and have bigger parties, are you able to, let's say, uh, pre batch a cocktail like this? Yeah, absolutely. This is actually one of the easier cocktails to pre-batch because you don't have the citrus to worry about and you don't have something like sparkling to worry about. So this is a stirred cocktail, uh, just using a spirit, whatever your uh, sweetening agent in this case is St. Germain elderflower liqueur. Also a very simple cocktail to batch. So I would definitely recommend batching this beforehand. For me, batching cocktails is really to help with the ease of entertaining. So I don't wanna have to make, you know, a la carte cocktails through out the evening. I want to be able to spend time with my friends and family, have those conversations and not be worried about making them their next drink. So to me, it really helps you to save time in that respect. It's very simple. Um, I would basically take, I mean, I just created this cocktail, which is a one person cocktail, but you could just multiply that to how many servings you want to be able to serve. Um, if you're not going to add dilution, which you could, but that gets a little bit more technical. Um, but if you didn't want to add dilution, what I would do is uh, actually chill it, excuse me, in, in your refrigerator um, and let it chill down and then make sure you serve the cocktail over ice so it does get enough of that uh, beautiful dilution, which actually adds to your cocktail balance as well. Those are really Amazing. great tips. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Alicia, when we were coming up with this theme and when I was hounding you down for the cocktail, obviously, and you said I need a teacup, I got so excited because I was like, oh my God, I'm going to live out my Alice in Wonderland fantasy. We're going to have an adult <laughs> tea party. Um, how much fun is it going to be drinking a cocktail in a teacup? So I found this Louis Bourgeois kind of trippy, abstract yeah. uh, red teacup that I thought that would be really fun to, you know, have that cocktail with all that beautiful like painting on the inside. Um, so this was like, as you know, I'm a martini girl, but this for me with the with the cloud was so surrealist with such a complete fantasy, such a fun way to have a nightcap. My question to you is, what other cocktails can we enjoy using a teacup? So I think you can put any cocktail into a teacup, honestly. Just like you said, it's about living out that fantastical kind of dream world. Um, I really love using unexpected vessels to give that cocktail theater. I think for me, one rule I would probably say, or one thing that you can definitely lean on, if it's tea in the cocktail, you 100% can serve it in a teacup. I also mm -hmm. really love, I know Hilton was asking about batching cocktails. If you didn't want to batch, like you know, a 10 person uh, cocktail, you could also do just a two or three in an actual teacup and then serve that I mean, in a teapot and then serve mm -hmm. that in a teacup as a presentation moment. And then you have a table side presentation moment that is just so chic, so perfect um, and really yeah. giving you other worldly vibe. Perfect for dessert too. Absolutely, absolutely. And we could Genius. all use more, more dessert. I love it, I love it. <laughs> We can. So Hilton, you know, obviously I was thinking about cotton candy, you know, cotton candy, elevated clouds. I really can't wait to see how you imagine this world using greenery. So let's see how you greened up surrealism. When people walk into a space that I style with plants, they typically fall into a surrealist daze. I mean, it's kind of expected given that my whole goal is to make sure that the place has, you know, a lush, more vibrant vibe, meaning a lot of greenery. My friends and creative collaborators here, Alicia and Sasha, are really adding a lot of cool, wild things to the surrealist moment. I mean, cotton candy clouds, hands sticking out of pastry trays. There's a lot going on here. Luckily, my addition to this scene is a lot of life. 
Now, when it comes to picking out plants for a surrealist scene, I mean, come on, you can't beat topiaries. Now, I decided to go with junipers because they just fit the mood. Now, these particular ones, whether it's a palm palm topiary or a spiral, they all have that feeling of just whimsy that whimsical feel that you just want to add to the space. That was the main motivation for me, how to make it as different for an indoor setting as possible. While these are supposedly outdoor plants, if you're gonna have a moment, a kind of themed celebration, why not bring them in for the night, allow them to set that scene and to just make it feel just more cool, more different, more wild, more surreal. Hilton, you are blowing my mind right now. Like, I, who would have thought to have topiaries in your home? When you put that on the list, I was like, he must not realize that I live in a New York City, Brooklyn apartment. Like, where am I gonna put these outdoor plants into my home? Like, what in the world made you think of that? But also, I did end up finding a little miniature one, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. But how I am I it. taking care of this thing? Like, like how is it gonna stay? like that. I need the deep. Please explain. Please. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> it is really cute. That's cool. I mean, I love that you were able to get that. Obviously, in New York, you're going to have to do some searching. For those of you out there, you're going to have to go to your local nursery to find a topiary plant like that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when it comes to care, you're just going to make sure that you have the right type of light. And when it comes to topiary, if you're going to bring them indoors, they're going to have to have the best, brightest, brightest in, I would say, uh, indirect light possible. You don't want them getting hit constantly by direct sunlight. So that's really important. And you're always going to make sure that the soil is evenly moist. So when they're outside, they're used to getting a lot of moisture from the air, rain, things like that. So indoors, you're going to have to water them often to keep that soil evenly moist not wet there's a difference between wet and evenly moist uh to help a lot of you i will say make sure you go grab yourself a moisture meter it'll tell you when there are, your soil is perfectly wet so i mean honestly i took motivation obviously and inspiration i'll say from of course magritte of course dolly but honestly i was a kid in the 80s i loved uh, uh dr seuss and i loved edward scissorhands so i was thinking of uh, any sort of topiaries that could really uh, shake up the idea of surrealism uh, fairly uh, well there. So topiary plants indoors, why not bring them in for the party? Let them show off a bit. And if you do have an outdoor space, uh, you can take them back outside once the party's over. Amazing. So amazing. Hilton, I'm obsessed with topiaries. I've been obsessed with topiaries forever. They're so French. They remind me of Versailles and all the gardens in Paris. And, you know, I've seen topiaries in the shape of unicorns. I've seen topiaries in the shapes of lollipops and dolphins. Yeah. And I think they're just complete fantasies. And I see you snipping away on your topiaries over there. And it <laughs> seems like hard work. It seems like, you know, not, you know, not your average DIY over there. But my question to you is what kind of shapes would you recommend for a surrealist kind of fantasy topiary um, arrangement? And how are you pruning these topiaries? What goes into that with the snipping? You know, am, am I going to call you when it's time to, to snip away on my topiaries? What am I supposed to do? Uh, we'll call your local barber. No, I don't, I don't, honestly, <laughs> honestly, it's gonna be more about getting a topiary that fits the look that you're going for. So this theme is surrealism. Obviously, the spiral and the pom pom junipers that I brought in work really well. Those are the ones that you could possibly find at a local uh, nursery or plant shop. But um, if you want to get real wild, if you want to bring in, let's say, a unicorn or a dolphin or uh, any sort of shaped topiary plant. I call that's you, outside right? Of yeah, you call you you yeah, call me. You bring me out you. to East Hampton. I'll be there. I'll hang out with Puff Daddy, the pup. I'm not sure if uh, Puff Daddy's going to make an appearance today, but yeah, I'll come out. I'll, I'll, I'll shape up your topiaries. I'll also shape up Puff Daddy's uh, mane there <laughs> if you need me to. But um, I really appreciate all these questions. I mean, honestly, I just feel a little bit, you know, saddened by the fact that we're about to end all of this. I've been having I so know. much fun uh, just working with the two of you. But uh, Sasha, I love seeing what you brought to just, not just the dining scene, not just the welcome 
moments, but um, just being a part of this whole thing and the things that you brought to the table for my table, those uh, cloud uh, plates were just amazing, but I'm really That's excited bad. to see your space. So uh, let's head out to the East Hampton to uh, actually see what your interpretation, how you tackled uh, the surrealism moment. In this home, sometimes it can be hard to end the night early, especially when the late night lounge is styled in surrealism. I'm a sucker for good presentation and love the cotton candy garnish on Erlisha's Smoke and Petals Old Fashioned. For me, surrealism is all about finding a break within conscious logic, stepping into the irrational, poetic, and revolutionary. Hilton's integration of desert pink sun palms is absolutely stunning. I went with a sky pattern porcelain dessert plate to layer pink against blue and add a little bit of conceptual cotton candy to Alicia's cloud cover. Hands are a recurring theme in surrealism, so when I found this candle and bonbon tray, I knew I had to incorporate it in my tablescape. Sasha, oh my goodness. When I received, when I was opening all the boxes and it was like clouds, heart napkins, hands, I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. But it really was so many different symbols and patterns and colors. How do you, like, what, what are your tips and tricks in, in, in terms of like styling all of that without it being like too much, you know? By the way, before I answer that question, just to get back to Hilton, the surrealist puppy on my lap, that's Puff Daddy. So that yeah, was the right. not the real Puff Daddy. Daddy. Yeah, that was Puff Daddy. He's surrealist, which is why he's in the video there. Oh, but that was his haircut that Hilton. You said you would come over and give him a little trim. So yeah, of I'll course. Well, I mean, you that. can totally you can totally see why you love topiaries. He, I mean, you're he's puff. a topiary. Is, yeah, he's it, a topiary. It's literally a living topiary. topiary. <laughs> so, but. Erlisha, getting back to what you're saying. So you opened up all these boxes. We have the hands, we have the clouds, we have the lips, we have the hearts. We have, you know, all these different moments. So these motifs and these symbols are iconic symbols of surrealism. It's what you find in Dolly's paintings. It's what you find in Magritte's paintings. And although it's a melange of so many different ideas, they all work together on your tablescape because it is inspired by the artists of this time and their painting. So in, a, in essence, your tablescape becomes a piece of art, becomes a painting. And like I said yeah, last night when we were talking, it's not about buying an entire collection and having everything match here. That's not what we're, what we're trying to do here at the Salon Saint-Germain because we're creatives. So we're gonna create and we're gonna do our research and we're gonna be inspired. It's about picking all these things, combining them together and creating a unique and memorable experience for our guests and for the holidays. And we're trying to take the traditional holiday entertaining and turn it up a little bit and like create something really out of this world and inspired. And that's what we did here with surrealism. And that's why it all works together. There is Absolutely. an organization to this chaos. There's a method to the <laughs> madness. Exactly. Go big or go home. <laughs> yeah. I love all the madness. I mean, that's the whole, that's the, that's the beauty of uh, the surrealist moment here that you all created. I love that part of it. The idea of the tablescape and, and placing everything out. Yesterday we talked about the dinner tablescape and how we were gonna have that cubism moment there. Um, when it comes to having this nightcap moment, do you feel like it's important to change the location, to move it somewhere else in the, in the home? I think it is so important because remember, each different each different um, drink that we had, you know, throughout the evening at our Saint Germain salon, it described a different emotion, a different feeling. So you walk into the home and you're excited and you don't know what to expect and maybe you're a little nervous. And so you walk into this deco martini, it's elegant, it's conversational. You know, you're trying to get the evening started. You sit down and you're at this cubism dinner and you're, you have food and you're whining and dining and you're getting to speak to people on a deeper, on a more, more emotional level. And then it's time for the nightcap and you've already had, you know, your two drinks in you and you're sitting 
sitting down and you're retiring to the couch on a coffee table or or Alicia had a little uh, glass side table. And this is when things get vibier. This is when things get cozier. This is when things get more intimate. And the tablescape for the nightcap reflects that feeling that um, we have at this part of the evening. Things get a little bit darker and a little more sultry. That's why we incorporated more red and the blues. And so that was my feeling behind this. And I think that, you know, entertaining, it's like a song. It's like a melody, you know, you're, there's different flows and there's different tunes. And, and that's just, that's just how it was for me. So I think it's nice to retire to a couch or to a more living space and to serve your dessert and your drinks there in a different setting. I love it. I love it. You got to get those vibes right. I mean, that's uh, off top. You got to get the vibes right, especially when you're uh, oh, yes. getting the ending your evening, right? The party's yeah. almost over. Um, but uh, I hope this party isn't over. Alicia, you're trying to end no. this. Not party. yet. Not well, yet. We so didn't, what questions. we didn't include was an after party drink. There, so, I know. That's what we a need. Cocktail. Alicia, right. I we know you it. have something thinking up there for the after oh, party. Always. Always, always on beat. So we can definitely <laughs> get that. Maybe we'll do that for the next Salon Saint Germain. I'd love well, that. Well the, well, the next time we do this, I'm sure that we'll all be able to be with each other, not uh, I hope. In, in, in this capacity. <laughs> yeah. So I hope, I hope that you all send me an invite to your holiday parties next season. Absolutely. It was really interesting actually creating, I mean, this, you know, uh, Salon Saint Germain is as much about creating these moments and really giving inspiration to everyone at home. But it also really is about celebrating creative collaboration. And for us three to be able to conceptualize and to create these different themes um, has really been such an incredible experience, especially because we have never met in person, which is just insane thinking insane. about that because I feel like I've grown mm -hmm. so close to both of you over the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks um you know creating all of this with you so it's been really really an incredible experience of course I mean look zooming is the next best thing to being in real in real life right or seeing each other apparently in uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I feel I feel I feel connected now with the two of you I feel like uh we're gonna have to actually throw a party together so that everyone can uh, uh, really uh, do the things that we have created here. We can actually do that in real life together and uh, have people uh, come out and enjoy, and enjoy it. Totally. Absolutely, I'm holding you both to that. I have a couple questions from the audience. So I wanna get these in before uh, we wrap. So I have a question for Sasha. How do I make sure that all the decor elements I pair together are styled in a way that isn't overly crowded and busy? For someone on a tighter budget, or these are two questions they squeezed in there. Uh, so the second question is for someone on a tighter budget, what smaller surrealism inspired elements could I purchase that would still tie the thing together? So not making it overly crowded and then what could someone do to bring this thing to life with a tighter budget? So to not overly crowd your table. So let's like hone in on what your tabletop is. Is it a side table? Is it a coffee table? Is it a dining table? Is it a countertop? And this is when it's important to take out a measuring tape. As an interior designer, I always have one on my belt loop on my jeans. Um, I kind of feel like, you know, a little bit of a bad girl when I have my measuring tape on me all the time. <laughs> um, but so it's really important when you're shopping online, you know, cause you can't actually see these things in real life, take out your measuring tape, kind of, you know, be, a, be, you know, mathematical about it. You know, sometimes things look smaller than they appear. Sometimes things look bigger than they appear. So you really have to like kind of measure and figure all of that out. Um, and then if you want to add in that surrealist glamour, that artistic touch to your tabletop, but you don't have like an incredibly high budget, you could easily do so with really quirky, fun desserts, little little chocolates or little things that look like lips or this and that. And also um, the Surrealist movement, you can find vintage things from the 40s, the 50s and the 80s that all have a lot of kind of whimsical Surrealist nods to them because the, in the 20s and the 30s did have these um, 
did have these kind of overlaps with the 40s, 50s, and 80s. So if you check out Etsy or eBay, you can easily find vases that have hands on them or vases that are like shaped as faces too. You don't have to go for like necessarily the new expensive versions of these things. You don't have to necessarily go contemporary. You know, I would suggest you go on the hunt and try and find the vintage versions of them. Also eco chic. So that would very be my, much so. My advice. very much so. I'm such a fan of the Etsy. I mean, I spend hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Um, but I also, I'm also in New York where it's such a great place to go, you know, looking for different vintage finds. So I love those suggestions, Sasha. Yeah. Okay, question for Hilton. For someone who has a little less space to style, are there smaller topiaries, what well, we've seen one, um, that you would recommend working with? I mean, yeah, obviously Alicia has one there. There are many smaller topiaries. Topiaries come in all different sizes. So of course you can just go to your local plant shop nursery and find one that'll fit in your home. Just make sure you have the proper light and you will be able to uh, make sure it stays alive and thriving. So uh, yeah, it's all about just uh, visiting plant shops out there or calling them up and see what type of sizes they have. And uh, if you're not, I guess, familiar with how much space you have in your home, just like Sasha said, make sure you have a measuring tape. Measure out the space mm -hmm. where you wanna place them and then uh, go take a visit to a plant shop and then purchase the right one for that space. Should we make St. Germain measuring tapes? I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, now I feel like I need a measuring tape. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Next question. Okay, so this one's for me. If I can't get my hands on a cotton candy machine in time, are there any other garnishes you'll recommend using that are still whimsical and add a surrealist touch? Absolutely. So first of all, I think what you could also do if you were going to use a teacup, which is already adding that whimsy, you could actually do something like really fun dessert. So I love adding a couple macaroons on the side of the of the saucer, maybe playing with the flavors of the macaroons that really complement the cocktail. Um, so I think that would really be fun as well. You could also play with um, things like whipped creams and foams, right? So we could have done like a really fun foam or a whipped cream type of uh, top to this cocktail. And that would have totally made it um, this fun, different kind of cloud. So I say play with different candies and foams. Um, I think really bring that whimsy, but also remember, no matter what, you can always play with your glassware. I think that is such a fun, a fun place for you to really explore how to create some whimsy. Like go, as Sasha said, look at SD, go to your local vintage shops. You know, you'll find different kinds of interesting shaped bases that you know, smaller ones that you could use as a vessel. There are so many different things that you can use as a vessel that feels very unexpected. So surrealism was really all about stretching your mind and really going to an imaginary place. Uh, so I say do exactly that with your cocktails, like stretch it uh, and really go there and don't be afraid to, to play around. I would suggest okay. An old-fashioned donut over top. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you love especially that. when you get a donut like shaped in a in a lip. I mean, that's how or, I call it roll with it. I mean, I love the cotton candy, but definitely. I mean, for me, I think garnishes should definitely be edible. Like, I'm not so much into garnishes that you can't use. Like this, you could take a little bit of the cotton candy, mix it into the cocktail, or dissolve in, in a second, mm -hmm. and you can add more sweetness to your cocktail um, according to what you desire. You could also just eat the cotton candy because, I mean, hello, who doesn't love some good sugar Style rush? Style and function. Um, <laughs> exactly. So I think, you know, my one rule would be add something on your cocktail that is edible. Um, because if someone sees something on a cocktail or food, you know, they automatically think they can eat it. So you don't want people trying to eat like plastic. Um, but yeah, I True. love the donut idea. Cookies, like biscuits, it, you know, fun little shake. It's really fun mm -hmm. to go there. Um, also yesterday we did the citrus and uh, for the cubism, I had really fun geometric um, cut cutouts. And so you could do the same thing. You could find like lip cutouts and do a fun cutout. I mean, I can go for days about this, but you get the idea. You can uh, play and just really <laughs> try and find fun things to just add that extra element. So you don't have to have a cotton candy machine, um, but if you can get Got your cutout right here. 
<laughs> got you triangle cut out right there. I'm exactly. gonna Exactly. They're back. so fun, right? They're so they're, fun. It's, it's amazing. It's my new it's my new favorite thing, making these cutouts. It's like cut the thing, of... and it's so easy. It's so yeah. easy. It's okay, so I have another question tip. for you actually, Hilton. Uh, oh, someone right. asked when picking out a pot or large vase for plants and trees, can you share a few things that are important to keep in mind? When it comes to planters, it's all about making sure, for one, for me, making sure that that planter has a drainage hole. So you wanna start there. You wanna make sure that if you're gonna pick out a planter for a particular plant that you're purchasing, that it is at least two inches in diameter larger than the nursery pot that that plant is coming in. After that, once you're settled there, then you can start thinking about the color, the texture, the material that that pot is made out of and how that can help the life of that plant, but also how it can fit in with the color scheme, uh, that you're going for in the space that you're possibly styling that plant in. So those are the things that I would say start with, and then you can just have a lot of fun after that. Sounds like a Tasha collabo, right? <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. I cannot believe that we are coming to a close. I think the debut of Salon Saint Germain, um, our new series, has been incredible. There's no way we could have done this without the creative collaboration with you, Hilton and Sasha. Thank you so much for putting your minds together and really putting your creative flair on bringing interior uh, styling tips and plant styling tips to create cocktail moments. Um, it's just been it's been it's been a it's been a ride, you know, long shoots. Uh, phone calls, trying to figure out how to get the cotton candy on the stick, me looking at these plants in my house, like who's going to take care of them. It's been <laughs> a situation, but it's been incredible. So thank you so much. At the end of so the day, much. we could always have a drink, so it worked out. <laughs> Exactly. So we hope all of you at home uh, really felt the inspiration. I really can't wait to see what you create um, from these inspirations. Please tag us um, at St. Germain Drinks if you do decide to create any uh, styling or motifs at home that have really inspired you with Salon St. Germain. We hope to bring you this series very soon. And we really just want to remind you that you can really elevate and create joy in your home. No no matter what's happening in the world. And we want to be able to bring you that inspiration. So thank you so much for joining us for the debut of Salon Saint Germain. Until next time, Sante. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Good night, everyone.